the first time I went to Portraits of White, it just gave me such a nostalgic feeling. Looking for an exciting evening of great music, laughter, and fun for the whole family? Don't miss this year's Portraits of White Christmas show, featuring Francis Drost and special musical guests with a live 27-piece orchestra. Mark your calendars for December 9th to see Portraits of White, Harrisburg's holiday hit. Tickets and information available at PortraitsofWhite.com. Today we're going to talk about Portraits of White. And many of our listeners may not know what Portraits of White is, and you will find out today. Portraits of White is one night only, live performance where I pull out all the stops. Professional lighting, professional orchestra, 27-piece orchestra. Uh, Sometimes we have over 40 musicians at one time on the stage. I bring a conductor from Nashville who helps me choose all the music and arrange all the music, and he's even written a lot of the music this year. And bring a guitar player from Nashville, and everyone else is locally hired around Harrisburg area, and it's just a fabulous night where I put my own slant, I'd say, on Christmas, using my music and my stories and my personality. So when you were a child, did you you dream about doing a concert like this? Like, what really inspired you to even start it? I would say I did not dream of doing a concert like this when I was a child. I did pretend that I was putting on concerts as a child. So that thread was there from childhood on. But the idea of hiring a whole big orchestra and lighting came more from just getting really clear about what I thought I really wanted to do and was created to do. And it was from years of of doing really little events with, you know, 50 people, 200 people, and just seeing how music can really touch people. And and knowing that when I was doing that, I was in my sweet spot. And so in my 40s, I was listening to a motivational speaker a lot at that time named Jim Rohn. He's since deceased, but his teaching so inspired me on figuring out what it is you're really created to do that I took him seriously and I did all the little exercises he encourages you to do. And when I got to the end... I said out loud, and I remember the day I was driving on Interstate 81, I was driving my van, and I just said, I want to do a really big concert where everything is professional just for one night in my life, where I have great players, great music, great lighting, and just pour it all on. And from that moment, I began to decide to do Portraits of White. And Francis, you definitely pour it all on. I mean, it is first class Christmas show. And I've been to a lot of Christmas shows in my lifetime in various places in various towns. But yours is just very, very special. When I think of, you know, when you get called to do something, I think kind of think of Moses. And when Moses was called to do what he was called to do, it would just seem like so big, so overwhelming. So how did you even get started? Like, where do you start with something like that? Well, I can honestly say I thought I knew what I was getting into, but I did not. And I simply I simply followed that inkling in my heart and that nudging toward doing this. And I started asking people that I knew for help. I had the vision before I had the tools and the understanding. But one thing I think I had was a drive and a vision to do it a surety that this was what I was created to do. And I just started paying attention to people around me who knew more than me, who did this kind of thing more than me. And I started asking them to help me. And by then something was set in motion the day I said I was going to do it. And it just grew as I brought people around me to help me. And I still mainly to the conductor, I'll say to him, Ed, I had no idea was what I was getting into. And he would say to me, yeah, I know that. Mm-hmm. Um, but just keep surrounding yourself with people who do. Now, what I did know how to do is connect with an audience and share music. So that was not new to me. But bringing professional orchestra players around me and having music ready for them to read and do the night of the show, that was what was probably the most challenging. So the first year I decided to do this and actually said, okay, let's put feet to my vision. 
I booked a 400 seat venue. I brought a team of people around me, volunteers, and said, would you help me? And it seems like my years of doing small bookings paid off and people came and the team helped me and we seated over 400 people, filled the venue. Second year, moved it to a larger venue, filled that. Last year, we moved it to an even bigger venue, so we'd have room to grow, and we sold over 900 tickets. So this is year number four, and we are headed toward that 1,000 mark. So this really is the fulfillment of a lot of hard work, of a dream come true, of a lot of people around me that help me, and uh, I am so excited. It's really, it's really a miracle. Well, this is a definitely a girl question, but I have to ask it. Like, how do you decide what to wear? And when do you decide this? Like, I would be thinking, what am I going to wear next year? Oh, yes. We're thinking about next year. Uh, in fact, I am so blessed and this happens on so many levels of this show. I have a woman who she actually plays in the orchestra, but she used to be in pageants. And so she's all about girl things and dresses and gowns and how to walk and how to wear them and what looks good on you. And she loves to go shopping. And so she started looking for dresses for me. And pretty much I would say she picks out my dresses. Amy is my official, I guess, wardrobe person. And she finds these most amazing dresses. And she pretty much looks for him, and, and yes, I think about it a lot, but honestly, not nearly as much as I think about everything else about the show, because she has kind of taken that on of her own account. So, Francis. Why a Christmas show and not an Easter show or a show some other time of the year? Well, I have, I had quite a journey with Christmas. And so as I took time to figure out why I struggled with Christmas, I, I took a year off from doing the regular Christmas stuff, decorating gifts, all that kind of thing. I just wanted to see what Christmas felt like without that and see if I could figure out why I was a little bit disenchanted with Christmas and disappointed you know, I think you, it was our Thanksgiving episode. We talked about the letdown after Christmas. And, and I felt that even before Christmas, even heading into Christmas, I'd start feeling down already. So one year I decided to figure out why that was. And I skipped Christmas, uh, the regular kinds of things at Christmas. And as I did that and really searched my heart and looked deep, I I discovered that it was really just because our family had experienced a lot of death and tragedy. And so it seems like Christmas amplifies loss. Anything that's not great about your family, um, whether it's stuff that you can't help, it's just the way your family is, or like like a death, uh, our family couldn't help that we lost two kids. Or whether it's stuff that, you know, maybe you do create on your own. Either way, Christmas sort of amplifies dysfunctions in our lives. And so once I figured out what that was and can identify it, you know, half of my healing came from just realizing, okay, so I miss my family at Christmas and it's not our family union unit isn't complete in what it used to be because of all the loss we've had. Then I began to get healing and then I began to write music and I'd share those songs with the audience and they seemed to really relate to it. And then I did a CD project and you know, I love snow. That's what Portraits of White, the song, is all about. Because I love snow. Shimmering rays of shining sun Making the winter seem like fun Covering and melting a bend in the snow Wanting a friend who... Then there's Ride in the Sleigh. There's a song about miracles. Trust 
So there are a lot of great, upbeat, fun songs on this project, but there's also a couple songs that definitely pay attention to that longing I had in my heart for Christmas to be different. like Christmas was a great time to use my gifts and my platform to just say, hey, if you struggle with Christmas, I get it. I do too. But let's come together for one night and let's laugh and let's just acknowledge that it's hard sometimes, but keep going and keep moving and inspire everyone over the holidays. So out of my own experience and story, I wanted to create an evening that acknowledges it, not for long, but just says, yep, I get it. But let's still have a great night of music and remember all the wonderful things about the holidays, like great music, like family that we still have with us. And, you know, maybe, just maybe, we could make this year the best Christmas ever. Folks, you need to come to this concert. You will enjoy this. It's just a beautiful, beautiful concert. And France is going to tell us a little bit more about it. Thanks, Pam. Thanks for your enthusiasm and for giving me a chance to share about the concert. So it is December 9th, 2017 at 7 o'clock p.m. in Camp Hill, Pennsylvania. You can find out more information on my website, portraitsofwhite.com. So whether you've been to the show before or you've never been, I would love to have you. Every year, we plan fresh, and we incorporate things we think people loved from other years, and we plan new things. There's always surprises, so every year is different. You don't want to miss any year because they're all special. You can also buy the album online. You can go to portraitsofwhite.com or you can look on iTunes and just look up Francis Drost and Portraits of White and you'll see the album and the different songs. So I hope I'll see you Saturday, December 9th. And thanks for letting me share this part of my life and part of my passion. <laughs> 